Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to open Sony Vegas or Adobe After Effects and uh, drag in your video to the timeline. Uh, just add it in and then literally you want to just uh, have a look through it. You can see it's just a basic uh, Battlefield 4 cinematic from Sunken Dragon uh, that I recorded with the spectator mode. <coughs> uh, so next you just want to kind of right click on it and um, head down to the switches option and click dis disable resampling. It's always good to do this with any video that you're working with in Vegas. It disables the kind of frame ghosting. Uh, so you can see now our, we have our cinematic. So next we just want to go up to the render option, little green button, click on that. And you want to choose the image sequence from the list and then just browse to a location where you want to save the uh, output of JPEG files. Create a new folder which is advisable and place them all inside the folder. Just end, name whatever you want and then just click save and then just hit render and it's going to render out your, your video into a series of JPEG images and that will make it a lot easier for us just to import this into Buju and um, you know we can have uh, all the images ready to go. Okay so the next thing you need to do is you want to open Buju and uh, import your image sequence that we just made so click on file and open and browse to the location where you have your, your uh, image sequence saved and you'll see a series of images in here and you literally just want to choose the very first option and click open. Now you'll be presented with a window that'll give you a few options here. You don't need to change anything except the frame rate. Put it on 29.97, click apply, and it'll default back to 25. So just put it on 29.97 again and hit apply and it will work this time. And then you can just close that window. So now you can basically see our whole uh, video is imported as an image sequence and we can scrub through all the frames. So next thing we want to do now is we basically want to track the features of the scene and this will give us the tracking points so come over here and click track features and uh, just open up the menu and just up the sensitivity a little this will help it get a bit more accurate with its tracking and let that do its thing it could take a while depending on the speed of your PC mine's pretty quick so it should complete um, relatively fast so you can see all those red squares and they're going to become our tracking points in a minute when we do the camera solve Okay, so next we hit camera solve and we come down here to click optimize camera path smoothness and just click start. Now that should be a pretty quick process, it usually doesn't take too long. And then once that's done, we've pretty much got most of it done except the scene geometry. So you can see all these dots on our screen now, This is um, these are the motion points. So next we're going to do the scene geometry. Okay, so click on Scene Geometry and we want to use the dots that we tracked. So uh, click on Add Coordinate from Hint and on the Axis Type choose X Axis. Now you see this TV screen, this is going to be our tracking point, so we want to choose uh, two dots here that we can use as our horizontal lines. So choose this bottom left corner, hold Control and click on the second one. And then hit Connect to Selected and Update Coordinate Frame. Okay, so we need to add another coordinate from Hint, and this time we add a z-axis. What we're looking for here now is dots that are going at an angle that can kind of simulate 3D depth in our video. So we see these two dots here under this; these pillars are kind of support columns. Uh, we can choose these, and these go back at an angle, and that can simulate our depth. So if we highlight both of those and connect them to selected, and then just hit update coordinate frame a couple of times, and that should be us good to go. Uh, next you want to come over and add a test object. What this will allow you to do is see if your uh, test object is tracked well within your video. So imagine that that's your text now. You can see it won't move when the video is moving. It will all move in tandem with each other because it's tracked to that location. So you can scrub through them and uh, you can just delete the test object when you're done. Okay so now what you want to do is export the camera. When this window appears you just basically browse to where you want to save the file uh, in your folder, rename it what you want, and then click save and change the save file type to cinema4d.c4d and then hit save. Um, next thing you're going to have to do is scale the scene, so scale it by 100. Um, also make sure that format default and null size at the bottom is checked. Uh, the rest is pretty default, you can just click save and you're pretty much done then, and that's exported ready to open into uh, cinema4d. Okay, so open up Cinema 4D and browse to the file that we created in Buju and um, bring that into your thing. Um, when it says 
just enter in five centimeters there on the screen and leave split selections unchecked. Now you're going to see our whole scene's got all the dots and these are our track points. So you want to come down to the bottom here and just drag this scroll bar all the way to the right. This will allow us to scrub through every single frame in our video. Um, so you can see all those track points moving on the screen. So the next thing you want to do is you want to add a background. So you come up to the top here and just click and hold on this blue area and choose background. And uh, what this will allow us to do is add a texture. So you want to come down here and load some materials that you've saved. Um, so browse to your materials and just click on whichever ones you want to open. Here's just a couple of basic colors I'm going to bring in here. So now you have all your materials that you can use in your project. So next what you want to do is wait for them to load and then just double click on the space here and create a new material and then double click again and uh, just uncheck the specular option and uh, come up here to color and over to texture and just load click load image now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking for the first image file so browse to your image sequence folder and click on the first one and then just hit open and uh, that's basically going to bring that in you can choose no on that prompt and then now we're good to go we've got our uh, background image loaded on to a texture which we can apply to our background so just come up here and click on the screen and then just hit calculate and that should show you your full frame rate so we are at 30 frames per second and then you can exit out of that now you what you want to do is drag that texture onto the background over in the right bottom right corner or top right corner and uh, now you can see the background and you begin to see more of what the 3d space is like so you can see when I scroll through it, it moves and there's our track point that we selected in Bougie earlier and that's where we're going to be adding our text. Okay, so you want to come up to MoGraph and then head down to Mo Text and choose yourself a text. Come into this box here and you can type what you want. Um, I'm just going to type uh, Sunken Dragon because that's the name of the battlefield format. And then you can just position this kind of roughly where you want it. You can center it and have it whatever kind of way you want. Um, I'm just going to position it more towards the center. Come down to the height there and you can change the kind of overall size of it. So come in and choose yourself a font and uh, I'm going to choose one called Gang of Three. It's a kind of Asian themed font and it kind of works with this sort of map. So I'm going to choose that. And then you can see here, if I just uh, give it a little preview, uh, that's what the font will look like. There's no obviously colors or anything applied to it. It's just a basic white look and it's already blocking that thing in the courtyard. So we'll need to raise it up so it looks more like it belongs in position. So um, you just want to literally get it in, in a more accurate position that you like uh, that already looks a lot better even just raised up it's not blocked by that statue so then you want to come up to the uh, scale tool there and just scale it down so it kind of fits within the edges of the building now you can see that already looks like it kind of belongs up on the top there above near the TV so uh, just get it exact and kind of to your own liking I'm just going to move it down a little bit and then what you want to do is drag a material on so say this orange one here, we'll drag that on and you can see that uh, and it has a little bit of a shine so you want to come in and disable that, it's called specular so you can turn that off um, and then we want to uh, just have a look, preview looks okay so we want to drag a black on as well now what I'm going to do here is disable the uh, shine or the specular on the black as well so the black looks more dark and kind of even now you can come down here and this is uh, called projection now if you change it to C1 the frontal color will be the most dominant one and the back color will be the sides so in this case I'm going to switch it around and uh, just turn on the caps there just to give it a better look and now if I switch the positions of the black and the orange and change the black projection to C1 it'll be the frontal color and then come in and orange will no longer be, it'll only be on the sides. So that gives you a nice kind of bordered look for your text. So if we render that, it looks a lot better uh, than just the orange on its own. So next what we want to do is just make sure we're happy with it and uh, come up and give it another render. And then we can add little things like glow if you wanted, to, say the orange to kind of pop out a little more. That's a bit extreme, but we can tweak it here in the, men in the, the uh, glow menu and just get the kind of a little bump maybe that we're looking for that's okay so um, have a look at that 
see what you think. Orange. It's all about playing around with it and find the kind of look you want. Um, it's very much down to individual choice, but you can do what you want. So the next thing we can do is add a light. So if you come up here to the top, we can um, add a light to our scene. So click on the light bulb and choose light. Now what this will do is it will create a light in our scene that we can move around in position and get different reflective effects on our text. You can even use it to cast shadows, but that's a bit more advanced. So we'll just stick with just the basic light. Um, so that will just be f f basically pointing light directly at, and you can see the bit of the glow gets caught by some of the light and kind of makes it pop a little bit. Um, it's a nice effect to get. Uh, so that's a really handy little thing that you can play around with. Okay, so now you want to come up to the top and choose the render settings. Come in under output and put in 1920 by 1080. I'll give you 1080p. Um, you can keep the rest of the settings the way I have them here. Make sure your frame rate is on 30. Um, and then under the frame settings, you want to come down and choose all frames. That will make sure that every frame in your cinematic is included, so zero to whatever the amount is. Then you want to come down to the save tab and just click those dots, and that will allow you to specify where you want to save your outputted file to. So I'm just going to save it in here with all this other stuff. and. Uh, you can just come here and type in whatever name you want for your file and then you can click save. So um, next thing you want to do is just make sure that it's saving a video file. Uh, all composed. So come down here and choose AVI movie and uh, you basically can browse to that folder again and then specify the name of the movie that you want. Uh, I'm just going to type in this here. Just call it finished, finished clip um, from Sunken Dragon. So type that in and uh, then basically save at that location and you're good to go. Oh, if you could spell it that would help. Yeah, and then just click uh, save. So now what you want to do is just make sure it's on AVI and then, yeah, that's good. Go into options and then choose compressor. You're going to need a codec called Lagerith. I'll include it in the description, but just click on Lagerith lossless codec and then hit configure. Um, you can choose whatever option you want here, but I choose RGB. Um, if you've got a good processor, put multi-threading on. gives you an extra bit of speed, and then you can just hit OK. And uh, now you're pretty much good to go. There's a lot of additional features you can add here. Glow and ambient occlusion, global illumination, but they will drastically increase your render times, and uh, sometimes they're not really worth it in terms of the look. So you basically just hit the render button, and as you can see now, it's rendering out <coughs> those frames for, for the they're all going to be one video at the end of this so yeah that's basically the process right guys so here you can see the finished video and um, here's another one I, I also made added in so you can see some other effects that you can add uh, that's about it guys and um, I hope this video has helped you out and I hope you have some fun trying to motion track in the future Alright, best of luck. Bye.